Hi, I'm Yolande Poirier from Oracle Technology Network, and I'm here at DevOps interviewing uh, Johan Voss. Johan, hi. hi. And I'm and Jim, Jim, who will help me with the questions as well. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Johan, uh, tell us what you do. I'm uh, the CTO of Lodjong, which is a small Belgian software company. We focus on uh, social media applications in Java, end-to-end -end Java, from the back-end Java Enterprise Edition, and front-end, uh, sometimes web applications, sometimes Java FX applications. So I've heard you are a, J a Java FX fan, so tell us uh, how you use Java FX. Well, we try to use it in as many projects as uh, possible. Um, and the moment that uh, uh, we have a customer that wants, that agrees with having Java FX, we couple our uh, DALI Core backend, which is a, a framework, an open source framework that we created and that adds the concept of users, uh, content, data, integration with social media on top of Java Enterprise Edition. We couple that framework with uh, a Java FX client where we use the Java FX control, the Java FX controls to visualize all the data that's available in um, uh, an application, and especially in applications that connect with uh, social media like Facebook, uh, Twitter, and so on. Wow, very impressive. So you have really clients who use, who will have Java FX as a result of it. So t give us an example of um, um, a client that you work for. Okay, one of the uh, um, clients that's using um, JavaVex in production now is uh, Culture Net Vlaanderen, which is uh, an organization of the Flemish government. Um, they have uh, a badge uh, system where many, uh, everybody can uh, gain points when they attend uh, um, events and so on. They can also share this on uh, Facebook and whatever. And um, at a number of events, they have uh, um, uh, registration desks that are um, laptops with an uh, NFC reader, and that uh, contains a Java VEX application. So the people, they swipe, they swipe their badge at the NFC reader, and it's immediately recognized. So the Java VEX application talks to the backend. We know who it is. We know how many points we already had. We can also give some suggestions for that person, and that person can then check in or eventually um, find out who else is uh, uh, at the same uh, location uh, or what other events might be interesting uh, for him. You know, one of the things that you may not know, Yolanda, about Johan is that, is that um, four of us uh, wrote a Pro Java FX book oh, a couple years ago, and we updated it for Java FX 2. And as we were going through the writing process, there were some pieces that were missing and we were a little bit behind on. Uh, but there were also areas of expertise that were missing in the authoring team. And so, because of my relationship with Johan, uh, we asked him, can you help us with the enterprise chapters? Because Johan has a deep background on the EE side, on the, you know, Glassfish and those kinds of things. So can you help us with the web and enterprise chapters? And so, Johan, uh, I, I you must have dropped everything you were doing because it literally in three weeks he was able to, uh, to, to write that chapter of the book and saved our publishing deadline. And so I'm very uh, deeply indebted to Johan for that. And I did a chapter on the charts as well afterwards. That's right. That's right. No, that was very good. But um, good. yeah, I think it's a quite an important uh, piece of JavaFX. How do you connect the JavaFX client application to a Java EE backend? Because that's where the data is and that's where lots of the value, especially the, the business value is. So connecting the JavaFX client with the enterprise backend is, I think, quite important. Well, you have a philosophy. I, I, you know, now, Johan is a, has a doctorate in applied physics, yeah. I believe. Is that true? That, that's correct, applied physics, yes. Okay, good. Can you believe that? Yes, no, that's, that's very good. And, um, but you have this kind of holistic philosophy that you've expressed before about the relationship of, of client and server with another kind of larger philosophy that you have. And uh, I was wondering um, if you could kind of go into that. You mean the small connecting the, the world of the small with the, uh, the world of the large things? Well, yeah, actually that's a, um, the thing that really interests me in physics is how do you combine the relativity theory, which is a world of the extremely large stuff like stellar systems and so on, with quantum mechanics, the world of the small things. And that's the grand unified theory, the holy grail of physics. And I think in Java, this translates to how can you connect the, um, the backend servers, the extra logics and uh, the, um, the expensive uh, resources that you have in backends with the small devices like uh, tablets, 
phones or um, yeah, embedded devices running Raspberry Pi. And so, so these are two completely different worlds, but they have one thing in common, and that they both run Java. So the challenge is, it's Java in one world and Java in another world. So you need to be careful when you connect these two worlds. But I think that's, uh, that's one of the most important things in uh, computing today. How do we connect the, the part where the real enterprise value is with the, the part that the end user uses, the consumer? Mm -hmm. uh, you're, a, you're a member of the Glassfish community. What, what are some of your experiences been there lately in the, in the, in the Glassfish community? Yeah, um, one, one thing that I noticed, and I'm, I'm very happy with that, that is um, the, an increased interest in um, REST interfaces. Okay. Because um, in the past, um, web frameworks were um, rising um, as uh, champions, uh, um, and um, every day there was a new web framework. And you can use web frameworks to create uh, websites, um, no problem with that, but it creates a dependency on that particular framework. So the good thing about REST interfaces and the JAXRS API um, provides a standard for that is that you create your application and you don't care how it's going to be used by the front-end developer. So it can be used with a web application, but it can also be used with uh, uh, Java VEX, uh, for example. And um, one of the projects, that, um, uh, an open source project that I created together with Jonathan Giles, which is called DataVEX, what we do there, it's a Java VEX client that connects to a REST-based, to any REST-based backend. And um, I think the good thing of the evolution of the enterprise uh, um, standard is that REST is becoming more important. And JAXRS 2.0 builds on top of JAXRS uh, 1. And it's, um, it's an evolution that I see, and I'm, I'm pretty happy about it, decoupling the output format from the business logic. Do you have more questions, Jim? Oh, I've got lots of more questions for Johan. <laughs> Would you like me to ask yeah, them? Go ahead. Okay. Very good, very good. Well, one of the things that, like, like I said, Johan have Johan and I are, are, are good friends, and we have a, a a professional relationship over the last several years. And he has, uh, I've mentioned how he's bailed me out before on the on the the Pro Job FX book. More recently, for the DevOps conference, he developed this application, um, and we kind of collaborated on it. I, I wrote the specs. And Johan worked tirelessly on, on a short deadline to implement those specs. But what it was was an application that would, um, that would render uh, Twitter tweets that would represent presentation slides. So the idea is, that you know how there's this syndrome of death by PowerPoint, right? Where too many bullets on slides. So the idea is that is that if you could represent, if you're limited to 140 characters in a slide and maybe a graphic, then that would do the world a lot of good and not having to suffer through uh, slides that are t way too complicated. So that's the idea. So I relayed that to Johan. He really liked it and thought it would be a good idea to implement that for my presentation at DevOps. And so he created this application in JavaFX and with this data FX infrastructure open source project that he talked about and implemented that in time for my presentation so that I could express my slides as tweets that then are, are read in by the program um, and then displayed as you would see it in PowerPoint on my presentation. So it was a really, really nice thing that he did for yeah, me. Yeah, and actually I didn't have to write lots of code because with the two things I already mentioned, data FX did the connection to the back end and with uh, Dali Core we have the connection with uh, Twitter because uh, if your account is private mm -hmm. uh, you can't really tweet so you need to be authenticated. It's often a complicated process but that's with uh, Dali Core and we hosted at Dali Cloud. It's, uh, it's a no-brainer so no code required for that and for getting the tweets in your application we use DataFX so no code required uh, as well. So. Nice. The only, yeah, we had a few lines of code for visualizing it and making sure that you could click left and right for getting the next and the previous slide or reload it. Mm -hmm. So you can really focus on, on your um, business logic on the code that's specific to your project. I got gotcha. you. Good. Well, I, I do appreciate your help in that. You're I welcome. Have, I don't have any other questions. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much for coming and, and talking to us about what you're doing with JavaFX. This is very impressive. So Thanks, thank sir. you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yes.